Hey boys and girls, we're picking back up again today with There's a Boy in the Girls' Bathroom. If you have a book and you're following along, we are on chapter 4, page 18. Bradley stood at the front door and hollered, Mrs. Ebel is a liar. Don't believe anything she tells you. Bradley's mother got into the car, gritted her teeth, and drove to school. She was just as afraid as Bradley, if not more so, of what Mrs. Ebel would tell her. She wanted to believe Bradley when he told her he was getting all A's or was elected class president. She tried to fool herself that it could be true, even though she knew it couldn't. She knew her son, and she knew Mrs. Ebel wouldn't take the trouble to call her on the phone if everything were really as wonderful as Bradley said it was. Still, she hoped. She opened the door to Bradley's classroom. No one was there. Hello, she called out timidly. She looked around. There was a bulletin board covered with A papers. She looked from one paper to another and hoped with all her heart that she'd see one with Bradley's name on it. She didn't. In the back of corner of the room, she saw a chart that listed the name of every student in the class. Next to each name was a row of gold stars. Next to Bradley Chalkers, there were no stars. Mrs. Chalkers. Startled, she turned around to see Mrs. Ebel. Oh, you scared me, she said, then smiled. Mrs. Ebel didn't smile. Mrs. Chalker sat at a chair next to Mrs. Ebel's desk and bravely listened as Mrs. Ebel told her about Bradley. There was nothing Mrs. Ebel said that she didn't already know. Still, it hurt to hear it. Deep down, he really is a good boy, she tried to tell Bradley's teacher. I'm sure he has a lot of good qualities, said Mrs. Ebel. However, I have 28 other children in my class, and I can't spend all my time trying to help Bradley. He has to decide whether he wants to be a part of the class or not, and if he doesn't want to be a part of the class, then he shouldn't be here. He just makes it that much harder for everyone else. What can I do? asked Bradley's mother. The school has just hired a counselor, said Mrs. Ebel. I'd like your permission for Bradley to begin seeing her once a week. Anything that will help my son, said Mrs. Chalkers. I don't know if she can help him or not, said Mrs. Ebel. Bradley has a very serious behavior problem. If he doesn't show improvement soon, more drastic measures will have to be taken. Deep down, he really is a good boy, said Bradley's mother. Well, let's go meet the counselor, said Mrs. Ebel. She led Bradley's mother down the halls to the counselor's office. The door was open, but no one was there. Bradley's mother stepped into the room. Boxes were everywhere. Some were turned over with their contents half spilled onto the floor. A yellow ladder lay on its side. In the center of the room was a round table covered, um, excuse me, surrounded by chairs. But the table and chairs were covered with papers and boxes and games and books. There was hardly room for Bradley's mother and teacher to stand. She's just moving in, Mrs. Ebel explained. I'm sure she'll have it cleaned up by tomorrow. Mrs. Chalker shrugged. She picked up a dolphin puppet from an open box on the table and put her hand inside it. Suddenly, there was a loud grunt and a young woman entered the room. She dropped the box she was carrying and more than a hundred crayons spilled out across the floor. Oh, hello, she said. She was a lot younger than either Mrs. Ebel or Mrs. Chalkers. She wore blue jeans and a red t-shirt with rock and roll written across it in light blue letters. She had light brown hair, almost blonde, and clear blue eyes. I'm Carla Davis, she said, and held out her hand. Bradley's mother stared at her a moment, then reached out to shake her hand, but suddenly realized she was still wearing the dolphin puppet. She quickly removed it and put it back in the box on the table. The counselor smiled. She needs to sign the form so that you can start seeing her son, said Mrs. Ebel. Miss Davis looked hopelessly around her office. They're around here somewhere, she muttered, then began tearing into the boxes. Perhaps I'd better come back, said Bradley's mother. Found them, said the counselor, holding up the forms. She cleared a space on the round table by pushing away a box and gave Mrs. Chalkers a form to sign. Bradley's mother looked around the messy office, then at the young woman with the rock and roll t-shirt. She shrugged her shoulders and signed her name. Miss Davis took the form from her. Oh, you're Bradley Chalkers' mother. Mrs. Chalkers nodded. You would not believe all the horror stories I've heard about Bradley Chalkers, said the new counselor. I've been here less than three hours, but it seems like every teacher in the school has dropped by to warn me about him. Deep down, he really is, Bradley's mother started to say. I can't wait to meet him, the counselor interrupted. He sounds charming, just delightful. Chapter 5 At dinner, Bradley's father asked how the meeting with Bradley's teacher went. Bradley looked down at his mashed potatoes. Fine, said his mother. Bradley is doing very well. Good, glad to hear it, said his father. Bradley was glad to hear it too. 
Later that evening, his mother came into his room. I met Miss Davis, the new counselor, she said. You're going to begin seeing her tomorrow. No, said Bradley, I won't go. Please, Bradley, don't be that way. She can help you if you'll let her. I don't need any help. You said I was doing very well. Did you want me to tell your father the truth? Do you want to be sent to military school? Maybe he's right. I don't know. Maybe that's what you need. You said I was doing very well. I heard you. Please, Bradley, said his mother. Give Miss Davis a chance, please. You should have taken me to the zoo. It was drizzling the next morning as Bradley walked to school. He wore red rubber boots and a yellow raincoat. He stamped in every puddle along the way, making big splashes. He suddenly stopped when he saw Jeff standing next to the school, under the overhang. Bradley's right foot remained in the center of a puddle as he stared at his one and only friend. He took a deep breath, then slowly walked toward Jeff. He has to like me, he tried to convince himself. I gave him a dollar. Hi, Bradley, Jeff greeted him. He didn't answer. If you want, I can help you with your homework sometimes, Jeff offered. I know I'm new here, but I'm pretty smart, and we learned the same stuff at my old school. He shrugged modestly. Jeff looked, I mean, excuse me, Bradley looked at Jeff as if he were from outer space. I don't need any help, he said. I'm the smartest kid in class. Ask anyone. They headed for Mrs. Ebel's room, side by side, but not necessarily together. <coughs> Chapter 6. Jeff Fishkin was hopelessly lost. He clutched his hall pass as he looked down the long, empty corridor. The school seemed so big to him. He was on his way to see the new counselor. She was supposed to help him adjust to his new environment. Now, he not only didn't know how to get to her office, he had no idea how to get back to Mrs. Ebel's class either. The floor was slippery. It had started raining during recess, and the kids had tracked water and mud inside with them. A teacher carrying a stack of papers stepped out of a door, and Jeff hurried up to her. Can you tell me where the counselor's office is, please, he asked. His voice trembled. The teacher first checked to make sure he had a hall pass. Then she said, the counselor's office. Let's see. Go down the hall to the end, turn right, and it's the third door on your left. Thank you very much, said Jeff. He started to go. No, wait, said the teacher. That's not right. She's in the new office in the other wing. Turn around and go back the way you just came. Then turn left at the end of the hall, and it's the second door on your right. Thank you, Jeff said again. He walked to the end of the hall, turned right, counted to the second door on his left, and pushed it open. A girl with red hair and a freckled face was washing her hands at the sink. When she saw Jeff, her mouth dropped open. What are you doing in here, she asked. Huh, Jeff uttered. Get out of here, she yelled. This is the girl's bathroom. Jeff froze. He covered his face with his hands, then dashed out the door. There's a boy in the girl's bathroom, the girl screamed after him. He raced down the hall. Suddenly, his feet slipped out from under him. He waved his arms wildly as he tried to keep his balance, then flopped down on the floor. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 he groaned. What have I done? Oh, why didn't I just read the sign on the door? This is the worst day of my whole life. Suddenly, he realized he was no longer holding the hall pass. He stood up and frantically looked around. Don't tell me I dropped it in the girl's bathroom. He heard someone coming and hurried off in the opposite direction. He rounded the corner, then spotted what looked like some kind of storage room. It was cluttered with boxes. He ducked inside and closed the door behind him. Hello, said a voice. He spun around. A woman stepped down off a yellow ladder. You must be Jeff, she said. I'm Carla Davis. She smiled and held out her hand. I'm so glad you've come. I was afraid you might get lost. Chapter 7 Jeff sat at the round table. The counselor sat across from him. So how do you like Red Hill School, she asked. He stared straight ahead. There's a boy in the girl's bathroom echoed inside his head. I imagine it must seem a little scary, said the counselor. He didn't answer. I think it's scary, she said. It seems so big. Anytime I try to go anywhere, I get lost. He smiled weakly. It's hard for me because I'm new here, she explained. Today is only my second day of school. I don't know anybody. Nobody knows me. The other teachers all look at me strangely. It's hard for me to make friends with them. They already have their own friends. I know what you mean, Jeff said. Maybe you can help me, said the counselor. Me, said Jeff. How can I help you? I'm the one who needs help. Well, maybe we can help each other. What do you think about that? How? We're the two new kids at school, she said. We can share our experiences and learn from each other. Jeff smiled. Okay, Miss Davis, he said. Jeff, she said, if we're going to be friends, I want you to call me Carla, not Miss Davis. He laughed. Do you think Carla is a funny name? 
Oh, no, I just never called a teacher by her first name, that's all. But we're friends. Friends don't call each other Miss Davis and Mr. Fishkin, do they? Jeff laughed again. No, he said, then he frowned. The kids in my class call me Fish Face. Have you made any friends, asked Carla. I sort of made one friend, said Jeff, but I don't like him. How can he be your friend if you don't like him? Nobody likes him. At first, I felt sorry for him because nobody wanted to sit next to him. Mrs. Ebel said it out loud, right in front of the whole class. Nobody likes sitting there, she said. It was like he wasn't even there. It's bad enough when a kid says something like that, but a teacher? It must have hurt his feelings, said Carla. No, he just smiled. He may have been smiling on the outside, but do you think he was really smiling on the inside? I don't know. I guess not. I guess that's why I tried to be friends with him. I told him I liked sitting next to him, but then he said, give me a dollar or I'll spit on you. What did you do? I gave him a dollar. I didn't want him to spit on me, but then later he said, I'll give you a dollar to be my friend. So I took it. It was my dollar. So does that mean I have to be his friend even though I just broke even? What do you think friendship is, Carla asked him. I don't know. I mean, I know what it is, but I can't explain it. Is it something you can buy and sell? Can you go to the store and get a quart of milk, a dozen eggs, and a friend? Jeff laughed. No. So does that mean I don't have to be friends with him? I won't tell you what to do, said Carla. All I can do is help you think for yourself. I don't even know if Bradley wants to be my friend, said Jeff. Today at recess, we hung around together, but he, we didn't do anything. He acted like I wasn't there. Then when it started to rain, he ran around trying to push little kids into the mud. Could you share your feelings with him, asked Carla. That's the real way to build a friendship, by talking and by being honest and by sharing your feelings, like the way we're talking and being honest with each other now. That's why we're friends. But Bradley's different than you and me, said Jeff. I think you'll find that if you're nice to Bradley, he'll be nice to you too. If you are honest and friendly with him, he'll be honest and friendly with you. It's just like with the dollar. You always break even. Jeff smiled. Are you going to see Bradley too, he asked. Yes, later today. Do you think you'll be able to help him? I don't know. I hope so. I think he needs help even more than me. You won't tell him anything I said, will you? No, that's one of my most important rules. I never repeat anything anyone tells me here around the round table. Never? She shook her head. What about to other teachers? She shook it again. What about to the principal? Nope. Okay, said Jeff. He took a breath. Here goes, he grimaced. On the way here, I got a little lost and um, accidentally went into the girls' bathroom. He covered his face with his hands. Chapter 8. Mrs. Ebel was teaching geography. Everybody in the class had a map of the United States on his or her desk. Bradley's map was different from all the others. California was above Wisconsin. Florida stuck out of Texas. He picked up his pair of scissors and carefully cut out Tennessee. He was a good cutter. The edge of his scissors never left the black line. He wondered what was happening to Jeff. He knew he was at the counselor's office. He imagined she was doing all kinds of horrible things to him. He had tried to tell Jeff at recess not to go see her. He taped Tennessee to Washington. He was a very messy taper. His piece of tape twisted and stuck to itself. He looked up as Jeff entered the room and watched him hang the hall pass on the hook behind Mrs. Ebel's desk. Then he looked away as Jeff headed for the seat next to him. When the bell rang for lunch, he shoved his map into his desk and pulled out his paper sack. Because of the rain, everyone had to eat inside in the auditorium. He and Jeff walked there together, sort of. He's walking next to me, Bradley thought, but I'm not walking next to him. The auditorium was hot, steamy, and noisy. Long tables with benches had been set up across the room. Where do you want to sit, asked Jeff. Bradley ignored him. He stood on his tiptoes and walked around the room as if he was trying to locate his real friends. Jeff walked away and sat at one of the tables. Bradley walked behind where Jeff was sitting. Hmm, I think I'll sit here, he said aloud, as if he didn't know Jeff was there. He stepped over the bench and sat down next to him. Hi, said Jeff. Bradley faced him for the first time. Oh, it's you, he said. They ate their lunches. What are you eating, asked Jeff. Peanut butter sandwich, said Bradley. As he spoke, bits of peanut butter and bread flew from his mouth. What about you? Tuna fish, said Jeff. Bradley swallowed his food and said, I hate tuna fish. My mother makes it good, said Jeff. She chops apples in it. I hate apples, said Bradley. He sucked the last drop of milk through his straw, then continued to suck, making a gurgling noise. 
Sitting two tables away from Jeff and Bradley were three girls, Melinda Birch, Lori Weston, and Colleen Varigold. They were talking and laughing about something funny that had happened to Colleen that morning. Colleen, who had red hair and a freckled face, covered her mouth with her hand. There he is, she whispered. It's him. Where? asked Lori. Don't look at him, said Colleen. He's right there, sitting next to Bradley Chalkers. Bradley Chalkers, said Lori. I think I'm going to throw up. Don't look, whispered Colleen. Bradley stopped sucking on a straw. What did the counselor do to you? he asked. Jeff shrugged. Nothing. Did she yell a lot? Was she mean and ugly? No, she was nice. I think you'll like her. Me? asked Bradley. I'm not going to see her. I didn't do anything wrong. She's good at helping you solve your problems, said Jeff. I don't have any problems, said Bradley. He bit ferociously into a red delicious apple. I thought you said you hated apples, said Jeff. Bradley shoved the apple back inside the paper sack. That wasn't an apple, he said. It was a banana. Jeff's face suddenly changed color, first white, then bright red. Ooh, I think he sees you, said Melinda. Lori laughed. Colleen blushed. Come on, said Lori. Let's go talk to him. She stood up. Lori Weston was a short, skinny girl with long, straight black hair. Melinda got up from the table, too. She was nearly twice the size of Lori. She had short brown hair. No, don't go, pleaded Colleen. What's the matter, asked Bradley. Uh, nothing, said Jeff. So did I miss anything in class? No, Mrs. Ebel gave everybody a map. I got one. Don't lose it, said Bradley. Mrs. Ebel wants them back. Two girls were giggling behind them. Jeff and Bradley turned around. Colleen thinks you're cute, said Lori. Jeff blushed. Who, he asked. The girls laughed. What's your name, said, asked Melinda. Jeff blushed again. Colleen wants to know, said Lori. Then she and Melinda laughed again. He doesn't have a name, said Bradley, coming to Jeff's rescue. He hated Lori. She had the biggest mouth in the whole school. She was always laughing, too. He could hear her laugh from one end of the school to the other. Ew, Bradley Chalker, said Lori, holding her nose. Lori loudmouth, said Bradley. We're not talking to you, Bradley, said Melinda. Get out of here or I'll punch your face in, he replied. You wouldn't hit a girl, said Melinda. That's what you think, he shook his fist. Melinda and Lori backed away. We only wanted to know his name, said Melinda. And what he was doing in the girls' bathroom, screeched Lori. The two girls laughed and ran back to Colleen. Bradley slowly turned and looked at Jeff, amazed. Jeff sat with his head on the table and his arms over his head. You went into the girls' bathroom, Bradley asked. So what, said Jeff from under his elbow. Carla says, me too, declared Bradley. I go all the time. I like to make them scream. He smiled at Jeff. All right, we're going to stop there for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.